Let's go through thinking about the energy basis and how we're going to construct states in the energy basis, and we're going to start to introduce the idea of time dependence. So now, when we have some ket state, we are not just talking about spin. Our initial system is going to be spin, but this is more general than that. Now, because we're talking about different energy states, these energy states might be more than just two. So we think about summing over each of our eigenstates, so our, our basis vectors for this, which are our energy eigenstates, and we have different coefficients. So these are scalar coefficients, and they might be complex, they might not be. Now remember that how we are defining these is as the energy eigenvectors, the eigenstates of our Hamiltonian. So our Hamiltonian is going to be an operator, the specific definition of it will depend on what system we're talking about. We apply that to some state, and there's going to be more than one, so this n is representing an index, like is this our first energy level, our second energy level, and so on. And then we get some coefficient, which is our eigenvalue, which will be the energy itself. We're making a measurement on this system, we get back an energy, and we have not changed the state. So. This is what's defining these states, and then if we want a general quantum state, we do a sum where we have these coefficients. Now, the new piece that we are introducing in this chapter is also the idea that we have a time dependence, so our quantum state might be changing with time. Now, our Hamiltonian can be time dependent. That's hard. So right now, let's call this time independent. So, independent from time, meaning that the only place our time dependence is going to come from in our wave function is actually our coefficients here. So, what that will look like is we have some coefficient, and the reason I'm calling it C is to think complex. This will be a function of a time, but our eigenvectors themselves won't be. So if this is time independent, we expect this to be time independent. So that's what we have right now. So we're going to have, um, and again, when I say time independent, there's going to be a complex phase that's maybe going to have a time dependence that we're going to get to next. But think about it this way, that we have a coefficient. They might be changing with time. That's one way to really put in time dependence but then we also have these eigenvectors, okay? And all this notation is saying is, hey, we're summing all of them. So maybe this is three different eigenstates. We're gonna start with just two different energy eigenstates to think about, but eventually we could have an infinite number of them, but they're still discrete states. They're still countable. So um, this is just introducing some ideas and some notation. We will next really understand where is this time dependence coming from and how can we understand it?